So, dear brothers, <clears throat> today we are going to see one important, uh, you see, a prophecy that was uh, foretold many, many thousands of years before, <clears throat> even before uh, Jesus Christ uh, came. That is, Mene Mene Tekel Uparsin. So, where did uh, uh, you see this uh, judgment, uh, Mene Mene Tekel Uparsin came? If you read, dear brother, we know that uh, that comes in book of uh, Daniel, chapter uh, five. So before uh, going uh, into the details of those things, let us look into a few background about uh, what actually happened uh, during the days of uh, Daniel. We all know that Daniel was uh, the child of God, and he was a prophet uh, of God, and when he was uh, very young. He was taken captivity to Babylon. As uh, he was taken captivity to Babylon, we know that uh, Babylon was a very fortified city. And none could escape from Babylon because the walls of Babylon were so high and so broad that, uh, you see, uh, the height of uh, the, you see, the Babylon uh, a fortress uh, was uh, 300 feet high. Imagine 300 feet means almost 10 floors building. Much more than that one. And the width of the walls of Babylon was uh, more than 100 feet. Uh, you see, it had, uh, you see, 100 gates, 25 gates on each uh, uh, side, and it had more than 250 watch towers. And the gates were made out of solid brass. So none of the, you see, people could ever enter Babylon without the gate being opened up. And the walls were so wide that uh, four, you see, chariots, you see, each uh, chariot having four horses, uh, such type, four chariots used to continuously run on the you see, the walls of uh, Babylon, it was like a much like a hundred feet uh, road. You see, dear brethren? So, this was the, you see, the massive uh, uh, fortress uh, was so strong that none of the enemies could ever dream to come inside and attack Babylon. And, uh, you see, and the Babylon uh, one speciality was that uh, the city of Babylon was built upon river Euphrates. Can you ever imagine a city being built upon river? Right? That is not a small river, a huge river, river Euphrates. It's given in the Bible. You see, in Garden of Eden, the four rivers carried them out of Eden. One of the river was river Euphrates. So river, upon this uh, river Euphrates, uh, you see, the Babylon was built. And the river used to pass diagonally, you see, inside uh, the city of Babylon. And none of the, you see, uh, enemies uh, who could uh, siege uh, the Babylon city could never come inside, uh, you see, because even though they laid seed for the Babylon city, there was no scarcity of food uh, inside Babylon because continuously water supply was there in Babylon. So until that continuous water supply was there in Babylon, there was no scarcity for food at all. The people of Babylon lived, uh, you see, very comfortably. And they enjoyed their life. So, uh, brethren, so why did uh, the king uh, build it upon river Euphrates? Uh, if you see, the king of Babylon had actually married a princess uh, from a very cold uh, place. And as uh, she came to Babylon to live with the king. It was very difficult for the queen to stay with the king. And she told, no, I'll return back to my place because there's a lot of snow and the weather is chill there. Then the king decided, oh, yo, if the queen goes, what about me? Then uh, he planned and thought of building this uh, Babylon city for uh, his beloved princess. 
you see different therefore you build it upon the river if it is so there may be continuous you see water supply to the entire city and you see uh, babylon was famous for what hanging gardens uh, seven ancient wonders of the world you see one of the seven ancient wonders of the world is babylon babylon is was famous for hanging gardens the entire city of babylon was uh, fully covered with a lot of various types of uh, plants uh, trees uh, fountains uh, everywhere you see um, rivers flowing uh, so it may be pleasant for the queen and the temperature may be very cold you then so this is how babylon was built it was so beautiful as the bible says uh, it was actually the glory of all the kingdoms and not only that one babylon was also famous for its golden images golden statues you see and we all know that when daniel was shown the dream in daniel second chapter you see the king saw a dream now you forgot the dream and he told if anybody can interpret the dream i'll give him a good reward and daniel prayed and god revealed the dream to him and he came and presented before the king what did he see a multi metallic uh, image and the head of uh, you see that image uh, was made of a pure gold so pure gold and head means uh, the babylon empire the babylon empire itself was famous for gold because gold was uh, you see in much surplus uh, in uh, babylon we said you brethren therefore uh, the babylon was called as a golden city in the bible let us read isaiah 14:4 brother isaiah 14:4 Home brother, can you read? Do you have the Bible with you? Home brother, you there? Isaiah fourteen four. नेपाल है तिमीले बाबिल का राजा को विरुद्ध में यो आहान टिप्पणी बनने चाहो ठीचो मिचो गौरने कसरी थान को लागे हो सुन को बोल रहे ले कसरी थान को लागे हो ओके गुड सो इफ इन इंग्लिश द बाबलोन इज कॉल्ड एस द गोल्डन सिटी Why it was uh, called as golden city because of his huge solid gold. You see statues. See as God showed that uh, uh, to the king uh, in a multi metallic. Uh, uh, you see image. The king of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar, built a huge statue. You see of himself. Uh, you see uh, and he placed it in the place of Dora. You know what's the size of a uh, statue? It was ninety feet in height. You know, dear brother, ninety feet in height means almost. Uh, you see, huh? It comes to equivalent of ah uh, thirty, uh, huh? Ah, uh, almost thirty uh, floors of uh, building. So that uh, high, you see, ah, uh, the image was there. It was nine feet wide. Read that one in Daniel three uh, one, brother. Go, brother. Can you read in English? Sure, brother. <clears throat> Nebuchadnezzar the king made an image of gold whose the height was 3 score cubits and the breadth 3 score 6 cubit and thereof 6 cubits he set it up in the plain of dura mm. in the province of babylon mm, in the province of babylon you know huh? 3 score cubits means what uh, 90 feet uh, hey, you know what is a uh, 90 feet height i just now told you know uh, in uh, india and all we can see huge statues made of a what uh, clay the two hollow clay they'll be uh, dumping it inside the sea but here the structure was made out of pure gold not only hollow you see it was not all a structure it was made out of pure gold imagine such gold uh, was uh, there it seems therefore that city was called as a golden city. It was called the glory of all the kingdoms. Read Isaiah 13, 14, brother. Isaiah 13, 14. 
ಐ ಸೆ ತರ್ಟೀನ್ ಐ ಸೆ ತರ್ಟೀನ್ ನೈನ್ಟೀನ್ ಸಾರಿ ಹಾ ತರ್ಟೀನ್ ನೈನ್ಟೀನ್ ಹ್ಮ್ and babylon the glory of kingdoms the beauty of the chaldees excellency shall be as when god overthrew sodom and gomorrah oh dear. what does god call babylon as the glory of the kingdoms the beauty of the chaldeans you see how it shall be it shall be like sodom and gomorrah no one ever dreamed that babylon can ever be destroyed imagine 300 feet high what uh, is there huh? this itself is there uh, walls uh, fortress uh, and continuously the chariots are running there 250 watch towers are there more than 100 gates are there not to made of a solid brass nobody can come inside continuously supply of water is there There's no scarcity of any food such a babylon city you see uh, was uh, captured by king cyrus you know when cyrus saw this babylonian city he decided uh, to capture this one and destroy it completely but uh, as uh, king cyrus uh, saw this uh, babylon city dear brethren he realized uh, that it was so strong uh, it was so fortified city that he could not uh, infringe the fortress and go and conquer babylon and he searched to search to, he lay siege for many years and ultimately when uh, he could not find any way to go inside babylon that is the time that god guided him you know he, he thought he planned and he saw which is the loophole to go inside babylon and that is the time that he observed there is only one place uh, where there is no guards to enter babylon and that was by the way of the sea you see as the river entered babylon there was no you see uh, security or no guards in the sea so he thought by diverting the waters of babylon we can enter babylon and destroy it you see so what happened you know dear brethren what happened was that uh, immediately huh, you see the soldiers uh, began to dig uh, you see a channel to divert the waters of euphrates outside babylon and you know huh, king uh, uh, belshazzar you see uh, we read that one in uh, daniel 5th uh, chapter now huh? king uh, he saw all this exercise uh, of his enemies uh, you see uh belshazzar uh, saw it from the uh, uh, fortress uh, that the uh, people are digging the channel you see and uh, he could not understand why they are digging this channel uh, he did not know that they are planning to divert the water when he saw from the fortress that they, they, they are doing this exercise of uh, you see digging the channel for many many months together he thought that uh, these people are gone mad they're simply wasting the time and uh, babylon nobody can attack uh, you know dear brethren but that day <clears throat> babylon was destroyed everybody thought that babylon is a secure place nobody can touch babylon this is the right place to stay this was the exact and uh, chosen place to stay where is safe place uh, but that is the time that god destroyed babylon you know uh, when king saw this one uh, what did he do you know he decided to make a big party there he decided to make a big uh, you see enjoyment he called all the princes all the leaders all the captains all of his family members to partake in a huh, party let us read about that party in daniel 5th chapter daniel 51 please read brother daniel 51 belsaza the king made a great feast to the thousands of his lords and drank wine before the thousand see he drank wine before the thousands made fish for the thousands of his lord it seems given a thousand thousands were there imagine a party hosted for thousand people means a huge city babylon they were teasing all the soldiers who were digging the channel outside the fools the digging all day and night simply wasting time 
Our city Babylon is very great. Nobody can come inside. Nobody can destroy our city. It is so beautiful, so precious, so much blessed. None can touch Babylon. This was the thought of the Abraham. You know, when he was thinking all these things, you know, what did he do? He did a great mistake. And what was the mistake he did? He told, please get me the cups of the temple of Jerusalem. I want to put the wine inside that cup and drink it. You see, this was very, very sinful act which the king did. Read verse 2, Buddha, and 3. Belshazzar, while he tested the wine, commanded to bring the golden and silver vessels which his father Nebuchadnezzar had taken out of the temple which was in Jerusalem, that the king and his princess, his wives and his concubines might drink therein. Mm. Then, so that is uh, men, his wife, his concubines, his children, they may drink uh, from the precious uh, vessels of uh, uh, Israel, Jerusalem, the temple of Jerusalem, we all know. You see, we studied about the tabernacle without God's permission. Nothing should be touched in the way which is not commanded by God. What the way God told, the same way has to be done in the tabernacle. Even a small point or a small pin is changed without, as per God's guidance, the strictest penalty of it was death. Imagine to bring the precious and the holy vessels, you see, utensils of Babylon, sorry, of Jerusalem, and drink it in Babylon, to putting a wine was very, very, you see, sinful activity. Next, what happened with the verse 3? Huh? Then they brought the golden vessels that were taken out of the temple of house of God, which was at Jerusalem, and the king and his princess, his wives, and his concubines drank in them. Hmm. Continue. They, they drank <coughs> wine and praised the gods of go gold and, and of silver, of brass, of iron, of wood, and of stone. Uh, in as they drink wine, you see, as they're drinking wine, what did they do? They, you see, uh, they praised, that means they Toasted. Cheers. Cheers to this God. Cheers to that God. Cheers to him. They made the creator of the universe equal to the gods made out of wood, clay, stone and metal stable. Immediately what happened, you know, God's judgment came. How did God's judgment came? What happened? Verse 5, brother. Huh? In the same hour came forth fingers of a man's hand and wrote over against the candlestick upon the plainster of the wall of the king's palace. And the king saw the part of the hand that wrote. Imagine what happened immediately. As they were drinking the same hour, <laughs> the very moment, immediately then, uh, there came a hand, uh, you see, and wrote upon the wall it is. Imagine, they were all enjoying a very wonderful mood. You see, they were not in a mood of uh, worrying all at all. You see, they were all uh, in a mood of uh, joy, happiness. You see, enjoying with the wives, uh, having their, uh, you see, uh, most uh, uh, desired uh, dishes uh, and drinks. Uh, you see, they toasted for all the gods. Uh. Imagine, in such a condition... If something comes and writes on the wall, what will happen? That too, if a man comes and writes, it's okay. It is just a man's hand. It came and wrote upon the wall. As soon as the king saw this writing, you know what happened? Huh? His face changed. It was six brother. Huh? Then the king's countenance was changed and his thoughts troubled him. So that the joints of his loins were loosed, oh. and his knees 
smote one against another. Oh, what happened? His face changed. There was so much of joy, laughter, and happiness in his face as soon as this came. He turned pale. You know what happened? The thoughts troubled him. What is this one? What happened? What is this judgment? What is going to happen to me? And his joints lose his limbs. Now, what is the meaning of joints of the lions loosed? Huh? The belt. Huh? We usually put belt for the pant. Now, why? So the pant might not fall. What happened to Simsa? It is suddenly shrinked. His pants and all began to fall in him and to get loose. Usually this happens when a man gets severely nervous. What happened to him, sir? Huh? His knees began to touch each other. Shivering happened. Huh? Imagine the condition of the king. What all? Huh? Had gone to his head because of drunk condition. All came down. All kick came down. He came to his senses. You see? And uh, he could not understand this writing at all. What is this language? It is written. And immediately he calls all his uh, wise men, soothsayers, uh, you see, and all the astrologers uh, and everybody. None could interpret uh, this interpretation, what is written on the wall. And at that time, you see, the king's mother, you see, she came and told, the same thing happened with your father. When your father did not humble himself before God, even before God telling him of all the things, he did not surrender to God's word. That time, God gave him a humbling experience. The same way God judged him, God passed a judgment upon him and he was in the forest seven years eating grass as a cow. After seven years, when he realized his mistake, he gave glory to God. God gave him his sins back to him. He returned to the king's palace and restored his kingdom much majestically than before. But you being the king, his son, you have not realized those things. And she witnesses that there was a wise man in your father's kingdom who could interpret all these things. And his name was Daniel. Read that one in Daniel, fifth chapter. <clears throat> you see? Uh, verse uh, 18. Verse from uh, 18. Then they called Daniel. You see? And they call Daniel and tell him to come and interpret the dream. Now you see, what is the words that Daniel spoke? Of? Verse 18, brother. Verse from 18. Ah. O thou king, the most high God gave Nebuchadnezzar thy father a kingdom and majesty and glory and honor. And for the majesty that he gave him, all people, nations and languages trembled and feared before him, whom he would he slew, and whom he would he kept alive, and whom he would he would he set up, and whom he would he put down. But when his heart was lifted up and his mind hardened in pride, he was deposed from his kingly throne, and they took his glory from him, and he was driven from the sons of men, and his heart was made like the beast and his dwelling was with the wild acers they fed him with grass like oxen and his body was wet with the dew of heaven till he knew that the most high god ruled in the kingdom of men and that he appointed appointed over it whomsoever he will mm -hmm. and thou his son o belsazer has not humbled thine heart, though thou, th though, uh, thou knowest all this. Uh, but what did he say? And though his son, O Belshazzar, he did not address, O king, O Belshazzar, thou hast not humbled thine heart. Even though thou knew everything from the childhood, you know all these things exactly. 
you are never surrendered to god you did not accept uh, god's words you did not surrender to him then what about the verse 23 but uh, uh, but but has lifted up thyself against the lord of heaven and they have brought the vessels of his house before thee and thou and thy lords thy wives and thy concubines have drunk wine in them and thou hast praised the gods of silver and gold of brass iron wood and stone which see not nor hear nor know and the god in whose ha uh, hand thy breath breath is and whose are all thy ways has thou not glorified uh, as thou not uh, glorified that is the reason god has written this judgment your judgment upon the wall and this is the writing that was written verse 25 maine maine tekel upar sin you see read with the verse 25 ha huh? and this is the writing that was written maine maine tekel upar sin hmm continue hmm. this is the interpretations of the thing maine God had remembered thy kingdom and finished it. Tekel, thou art weighted in the balances and art found wanting. Paris, thy kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and Persians. Ah, God gave immediately the judgment to King of Babylon. What what is the meaning of mene mene tekel who persin? My name is God had numbered the kingdom and had finished it. That means God is counting each and everybody's sin, each and everybody's mistake or any violation of God's words. God is measuring it. He is counting it. He has kept a measure. We should not go beyond that one. If we go beyond that one, what would God do? God had numbered the kingdom and finished it. The chapter is closed. Tekel, though our weight in the balances and are found wanting. Yeah, you see, when the people they speak, they tell no. You should have weight in your speech. You don't speak unnecessary things and all. You see, each and every words have been weighed by God. Each and every things we do are weighed by God. He weighs everything. He sees if there is a real weight or not. Is there weightage or not? Or else we are just empty vessels or not? This is God saw Babylon was empty. No use. Throw him out. Tekel. You see, huh? The word weighed in the balances and are found wanting. Perez, thy kingdom is divided and give it to the Medians and the Persians. God pronounced the judgment. You think. that today nothing will happen you can rejoice eat deliciously enjoy good do it but hear the judgment of god mene mene take a lupar sin your kingdom is divided given to the medes and the persians imagine the condition of king cancel the entire party all is kick came down all is you see the things all has gone to his head everything came down immediately bowed down to daniel and promoted him but his promotion was only for one day one night not even one day just for a few hours as soon as daniel pronounced the judgment you see dear brethren immediately that day the king was killed verse 29 30 read brother then commanded belsazer and they clothed Daniel with scarlet and put a chain of gold about his neck and made a proclamation concerning him that he should be the third ruler in the kingdom. See, he should be the third ruler. King Isan is the third ruler, it seems. So this was only for a fraction of few hours. Next, what happened? Verse thirty. Uh. In that night was Belshazzar the king of the. Chaldean slain. Ah, in the same night. Ah, and nobody imagined when everybody were researching that this is exactly Babylon. This is the place where we need to see a very secure place. Ah, same night, God gave the judgment. You see, the king of Chaldeans were killed. Babylon was totally destroyed. Abdurrahman, 
you know, on the same night, uh, you see all the Medians and Persians, the soldiers, they were digging the channel, no? That they were to the water. The Euphrates uh, River was made to go around the city instead of going through the city. And the passage where the river went, uh, that became dry. In the dry place, instead of the river, these armies, the soldiers of King Cyrus entered inside Babylon and destroyed it. Read Isaiah 44, 27, brother. Isaiah 44, 27. Oh, brother, you're there. Read, brother. Read in English, brother, please. That said to the deep, be dry, and I will dry up thy river. Mm -hmm. I will dry up the rivers. God dried the rivers. In this passage, they came and destroyed Babylon. King Cyrus knew very well that Babylon can never be captured. When he came inside, you see, when he killed the king, and uh, took everybody prisoners, he saw that writing on the wall. Many, many You know, he wanted to know what's the meaning of it. Uh, then uh, they informed that uh, Daniel had already interpreted the meaning that uh, this means uh, the kingdom is uh, found wanting and uh, it will be uh, totally captured by Medes and Persians. As soon as uh, Cyrus saw uh, came to know that God had already passed the judgment and God is actually using Cyrus to destroy Babylon. Cyrus has surrendered to God. He immediately called Daniel and wanted to know the interpretation. You see, and he was so happy that he released all the Jewish people to go to their own house, to go to Jerusalem, first to build the temple of uh, uh, Almighty God. Uh, this is all mentioned in the Bible, right? Second Kings, last chapter, Second Chronicles, last chapter. All these details are mentioned. And that is the time when Cyrus spoke to Daniel. Daniel told about you, it is written in the Bible even before you were born. And Cyrus was so shocked to see and read that about him before his birth. Is given in the Bible and he glorified the God Almighty. Read Isaiah 44, brother. Same chapter. Read verse 28, brother. Huh. Huh. That said of Cyrus, he is my shepherd and shall perform all my pleasure, even saying to Jerusalem, Thou shalt be built and to, and to the temple. Uh, the foundation shall be laid. Oh, you see, Cyrus, he is my shepherd. He shall perform all my pleasure, it seems. Underline, this has all got a meaning. We'll see, just see. Huh? And uh, he shall build the temple in Jerusalem. Next, continue with it. 45, 1 and 2. Thus said the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have Holden to subdue nations before him, and I will lose the loins of kings to open before him the two lived a livid gate, and the gate shall not be shut. Ah, I will okay. go. The gates, God shall open the gates of eh? in the water channel. Let put now all the gates, God shall open in this way. Next, uh, I will go before thee and make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of brass and cut it 
thunder the bars of iron. Uh, nobody could go inside. Everybody thought nobody can go inside. But God uh, made a way. He said, I will make a way for you. God had chosen King Cyrus. And through King Cyrus, the Babylon in one day, very short period, you see, very fast, very quickly, it was totally destroyed. Now, what is the lesson for us, dear brethren? See, Babylon. You see, one of the glory of the kingdoms. Huh? Now, first of all, where do we read about the Babylon in the Bible for the first time? Where do we read about Babylon in the Bible? First, first time. In Genesis. Ah, Genesis chapter 10. Correct, no? Ah, Genesis chapter 10. King Nimrod. Everybody had a common language. Because of that common language, they began to build a huge tower reaching to heaven. God saw this was totally confusion. God had never told that you come to heaven. God had promised that in future I will not destroy the entire earth with the same type of flood. I will not destroy. I promised you. I put a covenant. I talk about the covenant. A rainbow in the sky. But the people began to mistrust God. Lack of faith. They began to build a tower reaching to heaven. God saw this was confusion. God confounded that language. They had one language. The language made difference. You see, dear brethren. One person spoke in one language which other person could not understand. What happened? There was so much a confusion. Everybody was scattered. So Babylon in the Bible is coming for the first time in Genesis 10 chapter and the word Babylon means confusion. You see? The word Babylon itself means what? Confusion. Now you tell me, now what does it mean? Eh? What does it mean? A full of confusion. Eh? Do we read uh, about Babylon in anywhere else? See, that the Genesis 10 chapter, that Babylon was destroyed. Then again, in uh, Old Testament, uh, during the days of Israel, that Babylon also was destroyed. But let us read one verse in Revelation 17. Revelation 17 chapter, <clears throat> verse uh, 5. Revelation 17, 5. Hmm. You are there, home brother? Good. Good, good. Read, read, brother. Read, go, brother, read. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon, the Great, the Mother of Harlots and Abominations of, of the Earth. Ah, see, again in the book of Revelation, what is mentioned? Uh, eh? What is mentioned there? What Babylon. Is Babylon. Or, uh, brother, Babylon is already destroyed. Now, how come this Babylon is again uh, mentioned here? Again, why is this Babylon is coming here? Huh? Suddenly, the Babylon which was uh, totally destroyed there. Huh? How come it is coming here? If you see, dear brethren, you see, there is one more Babylon in the New Testament also. Now, everybody thinks that Babylon is destroyed. It's gone. No, no, no. There is one more Babylon that is there here. Now, which is this Babylon? Now? It says, God says here, upon our forehead, there is a name written that is called as Mystery Babylon. That means secret Babylon. Not everybody can identify this one. You see, this is not written uh, uh, literally on the somebody's head, but this is a secret. You see, not everybody can, uh, you see, uh, understand and read it. This is the mother of harlots. You see, the abomination of all the earth, it seems. Here, here, here brethren, if you see, uh, here, one Babylon is mentioned. Eh? See, uh, let us read about that one in verse uh, 1, brother. 1 uh, to 5. Read, brother. Revelation 17, chapter verses 1 to 5. And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will shew unto thee the judgment of the great war that sitteth upon many waters. Ah, see, again, here, this uh, woman, this great Babylon, where is she sitting, it seems? Uh, she is sitting upon many waters. Uh, as the Old Testament of Babylon sat upon many waters, here again, this Babylon is sitting upon many waters, it seems. Uh. Continue, next. Uh. 
with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication. Ah, and they... they committed fornication there. You see, adultery, fornication, everything was there in Babylon. Same way here, what is happening is Simsa. Adultery is there, it seems. Continue with the next. Huh? And the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of our fornication. Oh, they are also drinking. They are also they were drinking. Here also, what is the reason? Sir? They are also drinking. Uh, continue with the next. Huh? So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet collared beast full of names of blasphemy having seven heads and ten horns. Uh, it was sitting upon a beast, it seems. Uh, women should never sit uh, with a beast. Uh, that is called as confusion in the Bible. So here, women are sitting upon the beast, it seems. Uh. Now, who is this woman? She is called the harlot. Huh? Now, tell me, church is compared to what in the Bible? Women. Women. What type of woman? Married woman or uh, virgin? Virgin. Virgin. So, she is engaged to Christ or not? Uh? Uh, yes. Yes. When will the marriage take place? Mm, at the second coming. Very good. Uh, second coming. When Jesus returns back, he is going to unite with the church. He is going to take the church along with him to the heavenly salvation. That is the time that the world will be born again on this earth in the resurrection. They will get life through Everlasting Father Jesus and everlasting Mother the Church. Until such time, the Church should not have any relationship with any of this world. That is fornication. That is adultery. Here, the Church, even before Jesus came, what did she do? She joined with the world. You see, she began to mix with the world. Huh? Now you tell me, is the church mixed with the world or not? Huh? Can we tell that uh, the church is not worldly? We can never tell the brethren. The church today has become completely worldly. Complete confusion is there. Where? If you see in the church, what confusion? What one tells, other can't understand. Huh? What do they tell? Huh? Soul is what? Soul dies or soul is immortal? What is immortal? Uh, but what, ask for the Bible. What does the Bible say? Soul dies. Then, is there confusion or not? Yes, there is confusion. You go and ask these questions to them. What they will give? They will give answers, weird answers, which are non-scriptural. The Bible says the hell is a place of burial. But today they claim that hell is a place of torture. They claim that the God of the Bible is Trinity. While the Bible says the God of the Bible is only one God. And Jesus is our Lord and the Savior. And Holy Spirit is the power of God. There is confusion there. One plus one plus one is equal to one. It seems how? One plus one plus one is equal to three. It should be three. How can it be one? Confusion. Then the Lord's memorial supper. When do we need to take that? We need to take it daily. Monthly or weekly? Yearly. Yearly. What time? Morning, evening, afternoon, dinner, breakfast? Supper. Supper. You see? But today, which church in the world gives? Sir? You tell me. They tell you, if you give in the evening, nobody comes. Forget about somebody comes or not. You do the word of God. No. You follow the word of God. No. Why? No, no, if everybody goes, what will happen to us? Huh? Only mina, 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 money, 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 money. What money, 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 money? Follow God. What does Jesus say? Freely have you been given. Freely have you received. Freely you so give. You receive the truth freely. God never charged anything for us. Does he charge anything for this oxygen, water, sunlight, and word of God? No, you, you got it freely. You do it freely. No. Why are you asking money? You see? They simply tell the example of tithes. In the Old Testament, it was there only for the Levites because they had no land. But today, eh, they got land, bungalow, car, everything, and all the sophisticated land. Along with them, they want everybody's money. Where does the Bible say that you contribute uh, this one? You should give it from your heart liberally, not a forced, dear friend. Then, baptism. 
Baptism is for what? For remission of sins. Sin. If baptism is for the remission of sins, why did Jesus have to die on the cross? He could have told everybody, please come, everybody at all cell, immerse yourself in the water, wash yourself and go cleanly. Jesus never said that one. Jesus said, do you believe me? Yes, he said, your sins are forgiven, go. Sin not again. That's what Jesus said. The power of his blood cleanses everybody from all sins. Everybody, not only Christians. But today, only if you believe Jesus dies. Oh, when I believed, Jesus was not there at all. He had already died for me. Even before my birth, he has died means, did he die thinking that tomorrow Raja will come, tomorrow Gopal will come, tomorrow home will come. Gopal means what? The meaning of the name Gopal. Think about it. We are all not Christians, dear brethren. You see, we all accept that Christ, not that he is going to die for us, because he is already dead for us, not only for our entire mankind, a thousand year reign. Where is this one? None of the churches, all these things are there. Only tongues, miracles, all these things are there. Where the Bible says, confusion, confusion, confusion. The Bible says the tongues is understandable language today. Confusion. Only confusion. Uh, you speak any uh, tongue which nobody can understand. That is a, oh, that is Holy Spirit. That is Holy Spirit. That is not Holy Spirit. That is a Holy Spirit. Unholy Spirit. Unclean Spirit. You see, God's Holy Spirit gives a fruit which is very useful to the church, dear brethren. This is confusion. What has happened? Uh, this woman, God calls it as Babylon. God tells you are the mother of harlot. Why? Because if mother is there, there is the daughter also. Who is the mother? The Roman Catholic Church and the daughter who exactly follow the footsteps of the mother. There is only one difference between the Roman Catholic and the entire Protestant denominations of this world. Is that they do idol worship, they don't do idol worship. This is the only difference. Apart from that, each and every doctrine is ditto, copied in all the churches. This God calls as confusion, as total confusion. Therefore, what did God do to Babylon? He rejected everybody. He confounded everybody. Everybody thinks that uh, this Babylon, this churches, uh, you see, the churches uh, huh, where the real God is not at all worshipped, uh, where there is totally full false doctrines, uh, where there is full of confusion, that is the secure place. That is the real place where we have all the support, where we all our fellowship, where there is joy, rejoicing, every good. Huh? Everything is there. You see, support is there. You see, huh? moral support, physical support, any permission you want from any department, school, colleges, marriages, you see, birthday, and the funeral, grave, everything is there. So, this is our secured place. But what did God say? This Babylon is going to be destroyed in the night. The people of Babylon were totally ignorant of what was happening outside. But God made a plan, dear brethren, to destroy this Babylon. Huh? Now, in Revelation 17, 15, what did we read? Huh? 17, for 2, we saw that the woman was sitting upon a beast. You see, she was sitting upon many waters. Right now? Now, read Revelation 17, 15, brother. Revelation 17, 15. Hmm. And he said unto me, the waters which thou sweat, uh, where the war sitteth, and peoples, and multitudes, and nations, and tongues. People, multitude, nations, and tongues. So, this Babylon is supported by what? The people. The people are the ones who are supporting these false churches. You see, if the people don't support, will the false church sustain? Will it be there? No, it will be totally destroyed. People then. You see, that two men is sitting upon this beast. The governments of this world, they are supporting it. Eh? What did we read? She is having a water, eh? cup in her hand. She has made everybody to drink of that cup. Eh? Correct, no? Revelation eh? 17 4, read, brother. Eh? Revelation 17 4, brother. Eh? Oh, brother, you are there. Can you read? Revelation 17 4. Oh, brother, you're there? Yes, but I have only Nepal. 
Okay. English you have? Seventeen four. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand, full of abominations and filthness of her fornication. Uh, she had a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. It is what a, no, you see, dirty language. They spoken against Babylon. That is the judgment of God. She is having a golden cup. What did the king have in his hand? Belshazzar, he had a golden cup. Which cup? It was from the temple of Jerusalem. They are having this golden cup, which is from the temple of Jerusalem, which God, it was a purpose, was for God's, you see, holy temple. That God's holy temple's golden cup is there. But inside, what was there? What did God, you see, what did the king pour inside that golden cup? What did you pour with that? A wine. Ah, wine. Babylon's filthy wine. What is the meaning of this one? Huh? The golden cup of the Lord is his word of God, his Bible. This is the golden cup, dear brethren. This is in God's hand. This is his God's holy service. This is not a service you do only for money or any, you see, huh? things uh, for enjoyment and pleasure of this world, uh, honor, pride. No, this is God's holy words. Uh, today, you know, all the churches, they have the Bible, but what is there inside? Uh? Inside they take only filthiness. What is not there in the Bible, that only they preach. That is the reason God calls. What does God call? You see, huh? but inside it is filled with all our filthiness of fornication. You know, huh? what has happened? Him, sir? The whole world is intoxicated. Him, sir. They're all drunk with this wine. Him, sir. Read brother. Revelation. 17, Revelation 17, 2, brother. Revelation 17, 2, please read, brother. Go for brother, read. With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornications and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of our fornication. Ah, made drunk with the wine of our fornication. The whole world is so much uh, drunk with our wine, it seems. Uh, if you go and tell the truth, they won't listen at all, you know. Uh, can we go and uh, speak to the drunkard? Can we speak to a drunkard? No. Uh, you have experience, sir? Uh? Yes. Uh, you go and speak to a drunkard, you will tell. He will preach to us. If you tell five words, you will tell 500 words. We will feel, Ayyo, why did he start speaking to this guy? If you tell, go to left, what will he do? He will go only to right only. Why? He will say, no, 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 you are wrong. My mind is very perfect. I'll go correctly. You don't know. You go, go, you go. I'll go. Then if you tell, sir, please watch your steps. You'll fall into the ditch. You'll say, no, where is the ditch? That is not ditch. That is the bed. You'll go and sleep there only. <laughs> that is the experience of a huh? drunkard. See, it says in Bible, Proverbs, Solomon tells, read 23 uh, chapter, brother. Proverbs 23rd chapter, verses 29 to 35. Proverbs 29 chapter, Sorry, Proverbs 23rd chapter. Go for brother, can you read? 23rd chapter, verses 29 to 35, brother. Huh? Who hath woe, who hath sorrow, who hath contentions, who hath hablings, who hath wounds without cause, who hath redness of eyes, they that tarry long at the wine, they that go to seek mixed wine. Uh -huh. Look. See? What is it? Who is having red eyes? Huh? Who is uh, having quarrel without any problem? They simply quarrel without, there is no problem at all. Simply keep on speaking some other things and all. Simply keep on quarreling. Uh, you see? Who is who is that one? Uh, who, who waits upon mixed drink? Cocktail? They tell no cocktail. Cocktail means water. 
all the mixed all the drinks they mix it and take a cocktail <laughs> can forever huh? mixed doctrine wine means what in the bible jesus said tells no no man can take a new wine and put it in the old wine bottle huh? it will break huh? so new doctrine this is a doctrine sir so huh? oh mixed doctrine is all false doctrine you mix it and drink and drinking what will happen ma yeah? see next what will happen if you if you drink false doctrine what will happen verse 31 hmm Look not thou upon the wine when it is red, when it is grievous its color in the cup, when ah. it moveth itself all right. God says, don't be foolish. Don't see the wine. Eh? Don't see the wine and get uh, deceived because it is red, colorful, sparkling gold. Eh? Don't get deceived. Kana, very be careful. Be very careful because that is wine. that is poison for your body some people tell no ah ha this is nice so you nothing will happen if you, if you take slowly eh? it will be bitter in your mouth but once if you go ah jila 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 eh? that is the way god says don't touch false doctrine very dangerous no 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 don't look at this false doctrine you see eh? don't see its color what color oh big church is there big organization so many people are coming oh alleluia amen songs are there good this is all not important how much you obey the word of god that is important next continue with the next ha huh. at the last it it fitteth like a serpent and uh, stingeth like an adder are what happened sim sir after the wine goes inside how it will be it is like a biting of a serpent if the serpent bites what will it uh, spew out will it spew uh, medicine or poison brother poison poison the serpent will give only poison this is the way the false doctor if you keep on taking it is like poison this has intoxicated the entire world everybody are drunk only fast doctor you go and ask anybody are you a brother what happens to man after he dies little oh amen alleluia his soul is resting in peace you see the believers are there in paradise all the unbelievers are there in hell suffering huh? this is the only doctrine huh? which is common among the entire religion of the all the world except to follow the bible next continue brother 33 uh Uh, thine eyes shall behold a strange woman, and thine heart uh, shall utter perverse things. Oh, see, what will happen to the easy simsa if we keep uh, drinking false doctrine, Babylon doctrine? What will happen? You will see strange woman. Strange woman means what? Woman again in the Bible is the true church. Strange woman means false church. Those who keep on listening to false doctrine, they will keep on seeing what? Uh, false churches oh this church is correct this church is correct this church, everything is correct but what church the true is coming that is not true they will see the strange woman they can't see the real church the real church is not here in the assembly of calling an election sure 1 lakh 44000 nobody can see that one every church they believe that only believe in jesus that is sufficient you will be saved automatically go to heaven having all the filthy character here if you go and sit next to christ in heaven you will spoil heaven is god so yeah unwise to take us uh, literally like this one to heaven no see what does he say ha huh? you sh- i shall see strange women your heart shall speak perverse things drunkard they'll speak no nonsense they'll keep on uttering nonsense and all we will tell you keep quiet sir don't speak you know you will keep on speaking that means what utter things which are not there in the bible at all simply use they use the bible take one scripture build a entire uh, mountain out of nothing huh? keep on speaking uh, nonsense uh, simply blabber keep on speaking huh? Huh? utter perverse things not there from the scriptures next brother verse 34 hmm. yeah thou shalt be as he that lieth down in the midst of the sea or as he that lieth up on the top of a mast uh, now what is example those who drink don't have balance they keep on wandering here and there you see uh, 
That means it is like sleeping on the sea himself. Can you sleep comfortable in the sea? What will happen? Keep on wearing. Can you sleep on a tip tip of that? Uh, you see, uh, uh, ship mast, the top on small rod will be there. Can you sleep on that one? No. Similarly, those who listen and hear and follow fast doctrine, they are not stable. They wander here, they wander there, go here, sometime here, sometime there. You see, we can't be such way. We can't be in the world. We can't be in the color. What did Jesus say? You can't serve two masters. Apostle Paul said, you can't take in the Lord's table and the devil's table. You can't uh, sup of the Lord's cup and the devil's cup. Two are there. Decide. Huh? Such type of people, even God chastises them also. They won't turn. Read verse 35. Huh? They have stricken me that thou say, and I was not sick. They have beaten me, and I felt it not. When I they have beaten me. God has beaten them. God has chastised them. War things God gives them in their lives. So many dangers, God saves them. That is a warning. You see, they should be alert. Huh? They won't uh, change at all. Why? Because though God beat them. Whom does God beat? Their children. God chastises his children. You should be very happy that God has punished me. Why? He wants us to walk in his path. You see? And uh, these people are such, uh, the world is so intoxicated that though God chastises them, they never realize their mistake. When? Huh? When shall I awake? I will seek it yet again. That is the reason the entire churches of this world are intoxicated. Completely drunk of this false doctrine. Eh? What did God say? Read the judgment of God. Revelation 18 chapter. Come to Revelation 18 chapter. <clears throat> Revelation 18 chapter. Brother, verses uh, 2. Hmm. And he cried mightily, with a strong voice saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and is become the habit habitations of devils and and the hold of every foul spirit and a case of every unclean and hateful bird. What did God tell? What was the judgment of God? Uh, there? Many, many tekel upar sin. That means what? Your chapter is finished. Not that uh, you will be punished again and restore back. No, 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 no. God gave a chance. You were in the forest eating grass. God gave the grace. Again, if you sin, close the chapter, finished. What did God say? Huh? He cried mightily, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, fallen. It has become the habitation of all the devils. You see, the great Babylon today, all the false churches, what is there? Only false doctrines, false prophets who prophesy false things in the name of the Lord. Yeah? What does the Bible say about these prophets? Read Jeremiah, brother, 23, 16, brother. Jeremiah 23, 16, brother. Jeremiah 23, 16, 17. Thus said the Lord of hosts, hearken not unto the words of the prophets that prophesy unto you. They make you vain. They speak a vision of their own heart and not out of the mouth of the Lord. Underline false prophets, what do they speak? They speak good to, out of their own heart. Lord would have not spoken at all. But yet they speak from their heart. Continue. Next. Uh. They say still unto them that despise me, the Lord hath said, you shall have peace. And they, they say unto everyone that walketh after the imaginations of his own heart, no evil shall come upon you. Those who do all wicked activities and just give money, what do they tell for them? Don't worry. God is there with you. He will bless you abundantly. All blessings he will shower upon you. Nothing will happen to you. Huh? Where does the Bible say? Huh? If you don't keep God's word, of, of course, God's judgment will come upon you. 
uh, instead of telling that one, they will tell what uh, the opposite on the way. Which what they will leave the church and go. Let them go. Uh, if nobody wants to follow the word of God, uh, then why? No use, no. God is searching the people who wants to follow the word of God. Be like Jesus. If you don't want to be like Jesus, no use. But he should have the What is the promise? Huh? Huh? No evil shall come upon you. Read verse 25, 26, brother. Hmm. I have heard what the prophet said, that prophesy lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. How long shall this be in the heart of the prophets that prophesy lies? Ooh. Yea, they are prophets of the deceit of their own heart. Uh, they tell lies. Deceit of their own heart. Uh, this is the way today, the conditions of the church. Dear brethren. See, Mika 311. Mika 311, read with her. Verse. Three eleven. The heads uh, thereof judge for reward, and the priests thereof teach for hire, and the prophets thereof divine for uh, money. Yet will yet will they lean upon the Lord and say, "Is not the Lord among us? None evil can come upon us." Uh -huh. Huh? Very clearly is given. Now they all preach for what? For money, for position. Just uh, don't give money. Let us see. They'll come do freely. Huh? See, this is the condition of the church. Therefore, the entire world is intoxicated. Therefore, what did God say? Your sins have reached heaven. So, God gave the judgment. So, similarly, read about Babylon, Revelation 18 5, brother. Revelation 18 5. First, we'll finish it off. Huh. Revelation 18 5. Hmm. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God had remembered her iniquities. Ah, her sins are reached. I have in the same condition about Babylon. Read Jeremiah. Uh, Jeremiah chapter 50. <clears throat> Jeremiah chapter uh, 51, verse. Uh, uh, One minute. Fifty first chapter versus uh, seven, brother. Ah, uh, seven, eight, and nine. Mm, correct. Babylon had been a golden cup in the Lord's hand. That made all the earth drunken, the nations have drunken of her wine, thereof the nations are mad. Babylon is suddenly fallen and destroyed. How for her? Take Bam for for her pain. If so, be shy may be healed. We would have healed Babylon, but she is not healed. Forsake her and let us go every one into his own country, for her judgment reaches unto heavens and is lifted up even to the skies. The tower reached to heaven now. Similarly, our sins are reached to heaven. Eh? Old Testament Babylon reached to heaven. Same condition. Seventh verse, Babylon is fallen, fallen. She has been a golden cup. Same verse in Revelation 17, chapter 18, uh, chapter. So God rejected that Babylon. Similarly, this Babylon was uh, God's chosen vessel. But once God rejected Babylon in 1878, uh, Babylon is no more a golden cup in the Lord's hand. What is the advice of God to us? He says, Babylon is fallen, fallen, forsaker. The advice God gives us in verse 9, he says, uh, forsaker, let us go, everyone into his own country, for our judgment has reached to heaven. So God is going to destroy Babylon. How? God is going to destroy Babylon. It is given in Revelation 16, 12. Brother. Read brother. Revelation 16, 12. Hmm. And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up. 
that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. Uh, same thing that you mentioned, Old Testament is given here. What there? What was mentioned there? The waters were dried. Euphrates rivers were dried. So King Cyrus uh, entered into the city of Babylon, destroyed it. Uh, similarly, this water that is supporting this anti-typical uh, Babylon, the false churches, the people, the people shall receive the truth. The truth shall be poured upon the people. <clears throat> they shall realize their mistake and stop supporting this Babylon. Once they stop supporting this Babylon, this entire false church system shall fall off. Then Jesus will enter inside. Already has come in 1874. He shortly, shortly these things will happen, you see. People will in, uh, enter, you see, God, Jesus will enter and he will destroy the Babylon. How? There's one more verse that is given in Revelation 18, see, 21, Revelation 18, 21. Huh? And a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea, saying, the with violence shall the great city Babylon be thrown down and shall be found no more at all. No more at all. Now, compared to the great millstone thrown into the sea. Why this comparison be? See, if something falls inside the sea, it goes deep inside the bottom of the sea and nobody can lift it up. You see, the expenses taken to lift the stone, you see, that's more. Uh, so, instead of that, you can buy a new millstone itself. Uh, Hence, if you see, so many big, big uh, ships are drowned inside. Uh, will they ever think about uh, lifting it up? No. Why? Because by the expenses that incur by lifting uh, the ship, uh, you can construct uh, two, three ships. Uh, you see, so expensive. Nobody can lift it up. Uh, this means utter destruction of Babylon. Babylon will be utterly destroyed. Millstone is compared. Why? Millstone means it was a, huh? a millstone. Down, a stagnant stone was there. Up, a stone was there. So what do these uh, two represents? The Roman Catholic and the Protestant denomination. These are the people who are grinding food uh, today's entire system will be thrown inside the sea. We shall phone be no more. But we should be grateful that God has given us the opportunity to listen to the truth now. You see, dear brethren, to accept the truth, to listen, to walk as per the truth. Uh, if that day Belshazzar king would have heard God's words, you see, and he would have quitted from drinking the wine, the false wine, he would have respected that the golden vessel, you see, God would have made him to be a great king. But he lost his kingdom just for a few minutes uh, leisure. Now, what was the advice which God gave? Everybody go to their own city. Now, let us read the last verse. Revelation 18.4, Buddha. Revelation 18.4. What is the advice from us? Uh, and I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people. Ah, that come me. out of her, my people. This is the advice of God. Come out of her, my people. That means God's children are still there in Babylon. You're all there in Babylon. You're all there in the false church system. What is God telling? Come out. Come out from her, my people. That is the reason God has given you the truth. You see, Jesus says no. Nobody can come to me except the Father draw me. Uh, and uh, except the Father draws him. You see, nobody can come to me. And you should all be taught of the Lord. You see, it is not we who are teaching you. It is the God who is teaching to you all through us. What is his advice? My people come out of her. If you are God's people, we will definitely give ears to this call. My people, God's people, if you are God's people, we will quit Babylon. Continue, brother. My people, come out of her, my people. Uh. That you be not partakers of her sins, and that you receive not of her plagues. Hardly, she will receive the judgment for her sins. Many, many take help. Seen. Dear brethren, now it is a time for us to decide where we are going to stay. Are we going to God's holy city, the heavenly Jerusalem, 
and worship the lord or uh, or else we going to for a physical uh, is a place where everything is there but uh, god is not there so dear brethren <coughs> may god bless these words any doubts any questions you have you can definitely ask me